Gabe, thanks so much for talking with us on the spotlight. You have been an expert for us on prior broadcasts, and we appreciate that. I want to ask you tonight about the TikTok Kia boys and some of these young teens, 13 years old, out stealing Kias and then committing armed robberies and drive-by shootings. Are you hearing that this is part of the gang life now here? Uh, yes, I am, David. It is a relatively recent um, occurrence in the Seattle-Tacoma area. I believe a lot of these kids saw a TikTok video. I think it came out of Milwaukee at first. And it showed these guys how to use a USB port to basically start these Korean-made Hyundais and Kia cars very easily, um, hot wire them, and, and take off within, you know, a minute or so. So that, that seems to be happening here now locally in the Puget Sound region. A lot of these kids are PR. They're released from jail right away once they're arrested in a stolen car. Some of them are brought back to their parents, but many of them are runaways. What is the solution to proper juvenile justice so that these kids can get on the right path, but also so people can be protected? They are doing drive-by shootings of occupied homes. Correct. You know, they're not just stealing the cars, uh, David, as you mentioned. They're doing drive-bys, they're doing carjackings, robberies, uh, other crimes. Um, marijuana, I think you have mentioned on some of the other shows, marijuana shops are being ripped off left and right. And so these kids also know, because they're juveniles, that they're not going to do a lot of time. I looked up the recent uh, RCW for juvenile car theft, which is uh, 13 point four oh point three oh eight and it shows how lenient really the laws are now i'm not one that says they hey you know these kids steal a car first time they should do a year in jail not saying that but i think what has happened is it has become too lenient and adults know how lenient it is for juveniles and they're coaching these kids hey nothing's going to happen to you you could do this do that you can, you can do it like 20 times before something seriously really happens to you and so they know this. Uh, a first-time offender is going to get three months probation. But like you said, if they are runaway, how do you keep tabs on that? They're probably not going to be, uh, you know, abiding by those those stipulations. Tacoma police disbanded their gang unit. They won't even say the word gang. They call it interpersonal conflict. Does Tacoma and Pierce County have a gang problem right now? Most definitely. I have seen the the politics of the G word, the gang word, uh, go up and down over the years. Uh, sometimes uh, people overreact. Sometimes they over uh, underreact. And I think that's where we're at right now. We are in a time where a lot of people are asking for defunding of the police, period. And gang units are one of the first things to go. Um, people think that it is targeting uh, people of color. And often there are people of color involved in these gangs. That's a bigger social problem, really, that needs to be addressed, the reasons why that is. But it is a fact that many uh, Black and Latino young kids are involved in gangs, and they're involved in car thefts. In fact, I did a survey when I was at the King County Jail of the very first crimes that juveniles committed. And by far, car theft for males was the biggest crime. For females, it was shoplifting. Nobody wants to put kids, you know, as young as 13, 14 year olds behind bars, you know, for the rest of their life. But when you talk to these kids, how can you set them straight when they don't have, you know, solid people in their lives that they can look up to that can help mentor them? Well, it, it is very difficult. Um, you know, it's hard for us to remember as adults what it was like as teenagers. You're trying to test your limits. And a lot of these kids are runaways, not because they don't have a home. They didn't want to abide by the rules in their home. And their parents got fed up and said, hey, you can't hang around here anymore. That happened to my own children. And it's a very tough decision as a parent. You know, where do you draw the line when they are just constantly being disrespectful and not abiding by your rules and curfew and want to party and drug in your house. And there, there becomes a point where you have sent them to counseling, to treatment. Uh, they've been kicked out of schools. 
and you just get really fed up as a parent. And so we need uh, more of a wraparound uh, approach for our communities, uh, in particular communities of color, where the parents are often working two, three jobs and not able to watch the kids uh, due to the cost of babysitting, you know, childcare these days. Uh, it's just the, the, the problems are multiple. It's not just this car theft problem with these particular kids. It's much larger uh, problems that society needs to deal with. And I don't think we've done a very good job of that. So yes, we need, we need counseling, but there's counseling programs out there. That isn't always the issue. A lot of times it hasn't worked with these kids. And when we slap them on the hand and give such lenient sentences, I think it sends the wrong message. Again, I'm not saying that they have to do a year in jail for the first time in car theft, but a progressive, more progressive discipline system and the, the, the punishment should fit the crime. And as they keep on doing it, they should not get the message, hey, then nothing's going to happen. They should get the message that you keep on doing it and more harsh things are going to happen. Your life is not going to get better uh, as far as your freedoms. And a lot of people say, hey, locking up kids doesn't solve anything. Well, we'll stop them from stealing cars. There's no cars inside the juvenile facilities. So that does it does stop that. Um, we, we have to decide, I guess, where our priorities are. And, uh, you know, it, it costs it does cost money but more than that it costs time and it costs um staffing is short not just on police agencies but in corrections in juvenile agencies uh i know uh raymond hall has a hard time getting staff hired there and keeping them there uh wages are not what they should be for what the job they they do uh probation is definitely underappreciated uh, these counselors, a lot of them are making barely minimum wage. We really need uh, to invest a little bit more on the front end. Actually, a lot more. Let me correct that. A lot more on the front end. Otherwise, we're going to be pay, paying even more on the back end when these individuals haven't learned their lesson. They're no longer just stealing cars. Now they've done the carjacking and they murdered somebody. Now they're doing big time in prison. Are some of these kids the sons of some of the gang members that were locked up and weren't there to help raise their kids? Oh, most definitely. There's been a generational, you know, pass on. Uh, it, down in L.A., you know, they're down in their fourth, fifth, sixth generation. We're here more in our, our second, third generation. It's not quite as developed, but definitely we should learn from L.A. Not what they've done right, but what they've done wrong in they have basically, you know, repeated history. History repeats itself when you have dysfunctional families that are not getting help, not getting that wraparound approach that I talked about. And so it's not just the juvenile, but the father, the grand, the grandparents, the brothers, the sisters, the whole family, the neighborhood, a community organization. Everybody has to be involved. Well, Gabe, this is a huge, complicated problem. We've got innocent victims. It's only a matter of time until we have some more tragedies with some normal people that just get caught up in the middle of this. A lot of people don't want to talk about this. I appreciate your honesty, your straightforward talk here on the spotlight. And thanks again for all you do to try to help these kids.